only four days since I filmed my update video and this is already my third video that I've filmed although I'm going to stagger the um, uploads so it's not like you're going to be getting like an onslaught of Charlotte but I'm really on a roll. I realised when I was editing my last video I didn't think I could fit any more pugs in and what you can't see is that I'm actually wearing some pyjama shorts which are covered in pugs and I have an additional pug pillow and my duvet has pugs on it. Anyone would think that I liked pugs. Who knew? Who knew? And I have had my hair corrected. Yes I had my hair corrected so I no longer have yellow hair. Although my scalp is itchy as fuck, so if I scratch it, I don't have head lice. I still have a headscarf on because I'm protecting the plaits because I always have it put in plaits instead of being blow dried because um, heat triggers off migraines. There's a fact for you. And another fact is this is a major, major OCD thing. Um, it's a bit of a win for me and I thought I would tell you about it because um, I'm being a bit brave today, but do you see this jumper, right? First of all, it was hung up wrong, so it's kind of like got a dent in it. I don't have an alien Martian nipple, it's just been dented. But this here is a roll neck jumper. Now that might not seem like anything to you guys, but to me that is a massive, massive, massive thing. Since I was 16, I've not been able to wear anything around my neck and obviously I folded it down and I got like a huge huge size so that it wouldn't be touching my neck but the fact that it's around my neck all my t-shirts I cut off the neck of all my t-shirts like just normal t-shirts I can't wear anything around my neck um, I can't wear scarves properly because they might touch my neck it's a massive massive it's probably one of the only things that I can't and I've never been able to conquer with my OCD. Um, but I loved this jumper and I was like, oh, I really want it. So I got it and it, well, I can't have it touching my neck. It's something that I developed when I was in my first inpatient unit, um, just before I went in. Um, something about people slitting my throat. That's a major thing for me. It sounds weird, but that's not what this video is about. I just thought I'd share that with you. This video is about um, the refueling process. Um, now, as you know, being in recovery, and the term recovery is actually something that I only came across when I joined Instagram. It's not something that anyone in any eating disorder service ever talked to me about. You know, that term, I only came across on Instagram, um, but the refeeding process is something that I've been through many, many, many times, um, and because I have nearly always gone from eating absolutely nothing, which is obviously one very extreme, um, and I'm aware that not many people go from absolutely nothing. But I kind of wanted to share my experiences um, and how to make it easier transitioning into eating again when you're doing it on your own. Obviously, um, I'm hoping that most people will be able to access help. Um, and by no means am I saying that I am a medical professional. Um, I'm talking about things that have helped me. I'm not offering medical advice, I'm just trying to give you a few tips of things to make it easier. Hopefully people do have access to eating disorder services or mental health services. But if you don't and you are tackling things on your own, I've compiled a list of a few tips of things that make things easier for me both when I'm starting eating again and when I came off laxatives because I quit laxatives um, successfully I had a laxative addiction. I have severe stomach problems and that was I was actually going to mention that um, because I've gotten dressed now for you guys to record this video but 
I'm not feeling very well, although I've been open with you with a lot of aspects of my health. Um, there are certain things that I haven't talked to you about because I figured you probably wouldn't want to know because I'm really struggling with it and um, I let's just say I don't feel very well. By the way, not only did I get dressed but can we also appreciate the fact that I put some makeup on for you because I look like shit. I am not a medical professional, these are just things that help me. So I'm going to get started. And I'd say the first one is probably slightly obvious. But if you've gone from weighing yourself very regularly, you need to cut that down because your weight is going to fluctuate dramatically. Because of what I've done with my eating, my weight does really fucked up things as I've talked about in the past. I will gain weight very, very rapidly. With refeeding, that can happen and that can be very, very scary. So if your weight is not being monitored by a professional, and you feel that you do have to weigh yourself, then do not do it more than once a week, at the very, very most, if you do feel that you have to weigh yourself. Obviously, hopefully, a professional will be keeping an eye on that for you, but as I said earlier, this is more aimed at people who are kind of going it alone. Yeah, your weight will fluctuate. For some people, their weight can carry on dropping. It can shoot up. Some people, it will go all over the place. This is kind of a more medical thing, and it's probably one of the only medical things that I'm gonna say, but milk, um, to avoid refeeding syndrome. It's something that I always try and include. I can't stand milk. I'm sure anyone that's ever been admitted as an inpatient will know that they like to pump you full of milk and there is a reason for that and that is to avoid refeeding syndrome because of the imbalances that can happen when you first do start eating more. I'm not going to go into it. I do understand it but I know that if I start rambling on about it I'll probably get it wrong. If you, will, if you want to do some research into it then there's lots of information online about it but trying to include some milk and dairy products. I can't stand milk, um, but I always try and include um, a little bit. And there are things that you can do to try and make it more palatable. I've just discovered that if you uh, froth it up like loads, like I have some of that sugar-free brush light, and if you froth it up loads, it goes all frothy and nice. Chai tea lattes, that kind of thing. I've not actually had those, they sound really nice. Um, I really want to try a baby chino, because they sound cool. Obviously things like hot chocolates, obviously in cereal. I don't like milk in um, cereal. I have milk alternatives, um, because that's my preference anyway. That always has been. I can thank my mum for that. Shush now. A hot water bottle. Obviously it sounds really silly, but your stomach's gonna be hurting. Um, so having a hot water bottle or heat pads, try and avoid it on your bare skin. I don't know if anyone else's stomach is fucked with all the little red lines. Yep, mine's like that. Oh, you bastard. Sorry, my computer's just crashed. With my list on it. Okay, that's fine. Now, I know that when you start eating again, it can kind of, you might want to start off with safe foods. And vegetables will probably be a safe food but that's counterproductive because vegetables aren't going to really do very much for you. And if you've got a meal plan and you're going to include some vegetables alongside your meals, if you're going to try and eat the vegetables first and then you think, oh, I'm full up, but at least I've eaten something, that's not really what you want to be doing. What you want to be doing is eating the actual calorific and nutritional food. That's the food that's gonna get the goodness into you, which is obvious, but it's true. Um, and if you are gonna eat vegetables, what I would suggest doing is slightly overcooking them. Um, if you're having cooked vegetables, because it's gonna be softer on your stomach, that's kind of what I tend to do. It's gonna make you feel less bloated but limiting your vegetables is, is going to be easier for you if you have to have anything like that. 
the other thing is don't count calories in vegetables that's just silly I once I once got into an argument when I was on Instagram because somebody tried to make a calorific increase of carrots and I was like that's not a calorific increase don't be so stupid I can't really eat fruit because it really really doesn't agree with me but I would say I would say avoid them at the start of refeeding because it's just gonna make you feel really bloated um, and your brain is going to confuse that bloat with fat but it's not it's just bloat and you want to do anything to avoid feeling extra bloated and that leads on to my next point which is fizzy drinks I'd say avoid fizzy drinks um, I can't really drink fizzy drinks there's a fun fact for you I didn't drink a fizzy drink from when I was 16 until like last year I've never really liked them I've never been able to drink like a full can of um, a fizzy drink I can only really drink like tiny little bits and I only had my first fizzy drink like last year or the year before and it made my brain explode seriously if you don't drink fizzy drinks for that long it's like a brain explosion but in your mouth I sometimes have to have them if I've got like a really big tablet it's the only way I can get a tablet down me they're gonna make you feel extra bloated so oh, I'd say avoid fizzy drinks if you can Okay, so my next tip would be about increases. When you're trying to increase, I'd say you need to try, as much as you don't want to overwhelm yourself, you need to try and take it slowly, but not so slowly that you kind of stagnate and become too safe. I know that for me, I find it harder to eat more than the day before but if I kind of get too settled in a few days then I'm like oh I don't want to increase um, so you kind of need to make sure that whilst you don't overwhelm yourself you do keep moving forward um, until you reach whatever your goal is but obviously if you are going from a very low intake you need to take it slowly um, to avoid refeeding syndrome hopefully as I said you are being monitored it's not always easy because as most people know watching these videos um, mental health services in particular eating disorder services in this country is a pile of wank um, and getting help is easy. Um, one thing that I found helpful, a bit random, um, but I found this really helpful with coming off laxatives a few years ago. Um, now you have to bear with me on this one, but um, it did work. I relapsed, but that wasn't because I could just use this tip again because for me, using laxatives isn't about the fact that I can't go to the toilet. Um, it's about a form of self-harm um, and stuff. Um, and plus, my bowels are fucked up. But when you do start using laxatives, you can get a lazy bowel. Um, and that can mean you can stop going to the toilet for a little while. And that can be very scary when you've been used to using laxatives and you've been used to going to the toilet a lot. And one thing that I did, at the start of the week, I would make up a pot of prune yogurt. Bear with me, this sounds disgusting. It's amazing. I loved it. I still love it. I love prunes. If you don't like prunes, then, or if you think you don't like prunes, then give this a go, especially if you do have problems going to the toilet but seriously my mum hates prunes oh she hated prunes and she loved this but I would get um, because natural yogurt is also really good for you and it's really good for your digestion but I would get um, about two to three hundred grams of prunes um, with a big tub of like natural yogurt and it doesn't need to be like expensive stuff 
um, and then you put it in um, and then whiz it up like a hand blender thingy because that breaks down the prunes because obviously prunes are like solid and that makes them easier to digest but then you leave it um, and the prunes kind of rehydrate then over the course of the week you just have a little bit each day and I'd have like maybe at least 100 grams each day and it used to make me go to the toilet and obviously you can have as much as you want because I really liked it and be warned though it does look a little bit like poo because obviously it's pure it up brown with yogurt so it looks a bit like poo but it tastes really nice and it's very sweet um, so if you've got a sweet tooth then it's very good for your sweet tooth and you can have it I don't like nuts so you could have like some nuts on it um, or some seeds or whatever um, sometimes I've, I'd have it like with bran flakes so that's like extra fiber but that really really helped me I'd have that um, for my morning snack that was when I first oh my god my scalp that was like when I first came off laxatives about five years ago because I went into hospital and I snuck laxatives in with me um, so I knew that I wanted to come off them when I came out and I kind of did that and I loved it although be warned don't eat the entire tub in one go because that will just do shit for England I hope this video has kind of been helpful it's something that I've wanted to do for a while because I don't feel like there's anything that I can offer in terms of recovery but I know that refeeding is something that I've been through a lot so that is something that I feel I can talk about as I've said quite a few times hopefully I've reiterated I'm not a medical professional this isn't instead of medical advice this is just me offering my tips um, and hopefully somebody will find something useful um, if you do like this video then please give it the thumbs up and subscribe and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.